I was going to leave it there. And then he said something that got me in full YouTuber beef mode because it was so utterly and absolutely offensive. So it's been sort of an interesting week for Kickstarters. We've had the non-Kickstarter the day before suddenly enter the gaming scene, release a game, run away with the money, and then say, oh, just uh, FYI, we were not a Kickstarter, never took anyone's money. You bought the game, you choose to buy the game, didn't Kickstart, buy, exit stage left. On the other hand, we've had the launch of Stormgate, which has been one of the biggest successes in Kickstarting forever, and a lot of controversy brought to that. For those of you that don't follow the RTS scene, the guys behind Warcraft 3, Starcraft 2, and uh, also Day9 and Tastosis' mom have launched a game called Stormgate that's been at ESL, and it's in a very, very, very early stage, and they're already showing it to the players for transparency. They've raised almost a thousand pound, uh, sorry, a million pounds, a million pounds on Kickstarter, and people are quite hyped around the game and obviously as the game was already being shown in a very early state there was a lot of controversy of people saying this looks bad this looks good but overall i think a lot of people correctly gave them props for showing the game as it was and proving consistent development over a very short time frame the game has gone from nothing to a game that can be shown competitively in an arena at esl atlanta in the space of two years which is impressive so that gets us to where we are today. The lesser known Kickstarters and the stuff that I love to cover on this channel. So I'm not generally the sort of person that loves to get into YouTuber beef. But the more I've covered the Pantheon thing, the more people from other channels keep popping into mine. And one of the complaints that they have is that the YouTube channels that they were watching regarding the whole Pantheon thing were shills for the project. Now, for those of you that don't know, Pantheon is an MMO that's been in development for over a decade and is still in pre-pre-pre-alpha testing for its backers that often paid over thousands of dollars to even be in the pre-pre-pre-alpha. If you want more info, I've made multiple videos about this, and they'll be down in the description below. Now, having fallen down on this channel the rabbit hole of covering failed Kickstarters, one of the things that you get in your YouTube comment section is the angry backers of the Kickstarter. I recently had one guy who actually did donate the full $1,000, $2,000 amount to Pantheon come in my comments. And I felt like an asshole making fun of the game because at the end of the day, these are people's lives, their money, their hopes, their dreams. And when people exploit it, I feel bad talking about it. But at the same time, as much as I feel bad talking about it, I feel even anger at the companies that take their money and give them nothing in return. But that's a bit of a sidestep. So uh, EQA Nostalgia responded to one of my commenters saying, in all caps, which is how you know a comment on YouTube is true, if Nathan was to take any money, he would have to declare it in a video. Now, if you say that, you're a moron because you don't. You only do if it's a sponsored video, i.e. you're in a contractual agreement to provide said video. Now, should a video on my channel for the latest Candy Crush suddenly appear oddly amongst all my other videos? Yes, that will be a sponsored Candy Crush video. However, if Candy Crush were to give me, I don't know, a lot of candies to play, I don't actually know how Candy Crush is monetized. I could be talking absolute nonsense here. If they were to give me many candies to play the game with and I was to then use that content, given I have so many candies, that doesn't need to be declared. I might want to thank them. I might want to say they're a sponsor of the channel. But I don't need to declare it as a sponsored video. This is nonsense. So I got really angry with him and I made fun of his channel for having, I don't know, I think he's got like 20,000 times the amount of subscribers I do and less views because no one cares about your random stupid opinions. But I was going to leave it there. And then he said something that got me in full YouTuber beef mode because it was so utterly and absolutely offensive. He said, and I quote, I, I'm quoting you, nobody can sue us for our opinions on YouTube. Also, the fanboys are super annoying, but I recently found out the haters are equally annoying. Not that I'm calling you a hater, but I've had people, blah, 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 
the first sentence, the first sentence already, F you, F you, get out of my channel, blocked. Do you know what has happened to people being sued on YouTube for their opinions? So I reply, tell that to Billy Mitchell. And he replies, well, there's an example. Wait, it was the exact quote. Well, who has gotten precisely nowhere, presumably nowhere with his lawsuits. Tell that to freaking Carl Jobs, who is a father, I think, of one or two, who's in his early 30s and has spent hundreds upon thousands of dollars as a YouTuber defending himself from arrogant people on the Internet. I have death threats and people stalking my channel because I don't like Boulder's Gate 3. And people like Nathan Napalm and Redbeard Flynn and all these guys in this old man community, retro gaming community, monetize hating on people because I don't like Boulder's Gate 3. One of the reasons my Boulder's Gate 3 video does so well, and I've taken back a lot of things I said, it was about the early access, is that the rabid fanboyism on this platform is so insane that they can monetize hating on people that just have a different opinion about a game. Well, that's fine. That's just the reality of social media. But you know where social media gets dark? When you take that same herd mentality and then you make people part with their money for Kickstarters that are full of crap. And then you go, I don't know. I didn't involve myself that much. Please like me still. And the YouTubers, you can see them doing the dance between being the sort of YouTuber that is approachable by a gaming company and the sort of YouTuber that wants to maintain a sense of being genuine with their fan base. If you ever see a Candy Crush video on this channel, kill me, please. And to prove that I'm not making this video for YouTube beef, I'll demonetize it now by playing some 1970s Christian Canadian music in the background. Because I love Canada. God bless Canada. You gave Peace. It to me, the love that set me free. I want to tell.